just in case the uh, class movie gets distracted, I'm going to run through the hands that we're going to use in class, um, which may be more than we actually get to in class, and uh, we'll go by faster. So if you want to review them, you can use this, and I think this is probably a more efficient use of your time. Um, so on the first hand, uh, West opens three diamonds, and we get a double from South. Now, the bidding is going to be a little bit unrealistic. I'm going to bid game. I don't know if that's really a good bid or not. I'm going to bid my spades and bid game. And then he bids a control bid. And I'm going to pretend that that's really important to me, um, even though I have three losers in that suit. And I'm going to bid six spades. So totally unrealistic bid bidding. Um, but it puts us under pressure to make six. So for the next few weeks, um, we're going to be hammering down on uh, discarding losers, on winners in the dummy, or when I say dummy, please remember, I always mean the hand that has shorter trump. Okay, Discarding losers from a hand on winners in the short trump suit, or roughing losers from the long trump hand in the short trump hand, or the dummy, almost always the dummy. Um, here is the case, though, where, in fact, the dummy, right, south hand, is longer in the trump suit, spades, than, than I am in my hand. All right. So what we're going to be looking at is counting our losers. Now, you count the losers in the long suit hand. All right. You can also count winners, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you don't count the losers, you'll often find yourself thinking, well, I had 10 winners. How come I just lost five tricks? And knowing where your losers are and making a plan to get rid of them in a timely fashion is critical. So, and this hand is an example, right? So I have a great chance at slam here, right? We have five spade tricks and six, seven with the hearts, and then we have three club tricks. That's 10 tricks, right? The problem is I need two more tricks. Generally, when we need two more winners, what we're looking to do is find some winners in the dummy that we can use, or we're trying to, uh, well, actually, more specifically, we're looking for finesses to add tricks, or we're looking to rough in the dummy. When we rough in the shorthand suit, we add winners, right? So we, if we have five spade winners, those are the five cards in our in South's hand, right? The ace is covering the two, but then we'll win the rest of them. But what we need to do is use a couple of those trump over in North's hand um, to create additional winners. So we can have five spade winners plus two more, right? And that will bring us to 12 winners. Now, the way that I like to do this is I like to look for my losers. Well, I have one loser in the club suit, right? The ace, and there's nothing I can do about it. It's a fast loser. It comes off the top as soon as they get the lead or as soon as I want them to take it. Right? And then I have two slow losers in hearts, the seven and the five. And I say they're slow because I'm going to survive the first two leads of hearts. And it's these two losers, slow losers, that you generally want to try to get rid of, either by putting them on winners in the, long, in the uh, short trump hand or by roughing them in the shorter hand. Right? And that's what I'm going to do on this hand. I see that if I give up that I'm going to, I can play this heart here, right? and I could, and I can take some trump here if I wanted to. But the thing I need to remember is that if I'm going to rough those two hearts, then I need to have some trump left in North's hand to take care of it. Now the thing about this hand is this: is that I don't need to worry so long as when I lead this heart, I don't. Right? East could be out of hearts at this point, right? I need to make. Well, actually, we know that he did wasn't because we saw a club come from West's hand, right? But, we, but what we want to do is, well, we can actually rough this one small if we want. Um, and now that's 8, 9, 10, 11. We know that East still has two more hearts. Now what we want to do is use our little trump here to get over. And, we may, um, and we're going to have to rough high this time. Right, we could rough low here, but then we couldn't get back over to South's hand, which is what we want to do. So we rough the heart high. Now see how the two losers are gone. Now if you count your losers, how many do we have? Right? We only have the ace of clubs. So we lead back over to here. And we play out Trump. I wasn't really counting because I'm talking. Um, but I can lead, lead them all out right here. Right? 
and then I can lead over to the Queen of Clubs. And at some point in time, one of these guys is going to take the ace, there you go, and then we have the two remaining clubs, and a trump to get back. So the reason why this hand was easy to play, and why it worked so well, is because the first thing we did was get rid of our hearts, our heart losers. And we had to do that immediately because we were going to need hearts to rough with. And if we pulled three hearts, the three spades, right, if we played the ace, king, queen of spades and pulled all the trump, then we would be one short. We would have a heart loser in our hand that we couldn't rough. So here what we did was we played the ace and king and then we roughed taking care to make sure that we could always get back to our hand, to South's hand, rather, with a spade, which meant we had to have an entry. We, we couldn't, uh, we needed to lead the small one over. We needed to lead the 10 over. So we could get back there, take two heart roughs. So this hand makes six because we get rid of our losers in the long trump hand by roughing them in the, quote, dummy, right, which is the hand with fewer trumps. So let's let's take another look at one that would be doing this. Um, yeah, double check, see where I'm supposed to be. I'm still in north. I tried to organize these better so I wasn't jumping around as much. And so we have seven, eight, and seven. Fifteen points. A stiff heart. So we're going to feel a little bad about underselling this heart, this hand maybe, um, when we have to be rebid re diamonds. But we get a great bid from our partner on this. Two clubs is a, a convention called Drury. Um, it's famous for being forgotten. As you learn gadgets, you will discover, and it becomes a common joke among players, that jewelry is easily forgotten. I often, whenever I see somebody, and awfully some good, some good bridge players, say I won't play jewelry, it's because I think they've been burned by their partners for getting it too many times. Well, what it does is it lets, it lets a, a hand, after there's been a passed hand, is in this case self-pass. We know they don't have an opening hand. So when I open a spade in the third seat, I might be doing it light, right? And depending on how modern of a game you play, it can be very light, right? Basically, in third or fourth seat, if the colors are right and I have an easy rebid, I will open nine-point hands. I will open ten-point hands um, and not even think twice about it. But then it's nice if my partner bids two clubs. They're basically saying, I am very close to an opening hand, but I couldn't open. And I have support for your spades. Um, it, can be, it has to be three support. It can be more. There's gadgets you can expand on Drury and actually set it up so you can show three or four. You can flip them around, as I have to do with one partner, so that two diamonds means I have um, three. and uh, I mean, yeah, three. And two clubs means I have four, which adds an extra help suit. Um, but in any event, the responses to this is basically you bid two spades. The modern method is to bid two spades here to say, yeah, I opened really light. We don't want to go higher than two. And you can see what happened here. We got an invitation in spades, and we stopped at the two level. Truery is a cool bid. Everybody forgets it. So you got to have partners you can trust because nothing hurts worse than getting left in two clubs on a contract like this. Um, so anyways, I, I, right, I was a little worried I had to undersell my hand, but I've got 15 points and a stiff and hard, so I got no problems. I'm just going to go right to game. All right, so this time the short trump hand is the dummy, so we can make no mistake this time. Every time I say rough your losers in the dummy or throw your losers on winners in the dummy, we know exactly what I'm talking about. The spade suit looks good. We could lose. There's the jack-10 out, and it could be hard to pick up um, both of them. So there's a potential loser out there. But let's just kind of leave that alone for right now and see if we need to worry about it much. Um, we have the ace of hearts as a winner, so we don't have any heart losers in our hand. In the club suit, we own, and I, this is the way to do it real fast in your head. I have the king-queen-jack. I am guaranteed two tricks. With the king, queen, jack of clubs, I am guaranteed to take two. And then you look at the number of clubs in your hand, and you subtract that number from the number of clubs in your hand. So there's three clubs in my hand, minus two. I have one loser. Of course, that's pretty obvious in this case, because the ace of clubs is missing, and then I have a king, queen, jack. 
but I will get two of those. Now, and that's all I can get, right? So I'll get two clubs. Um, I have one loser there, no losers in hearts, and then in diamonds I have two losers, right? Because I take the ace and king, but then the nine and four are losers, and I need to figure something out to do with those. Those are the slow losers, right? So nine and four, where do I put them? Can I rough them? Well, I, I mean, as we look at the hand right now, I have four dummy hands, three, so I could rough one, right? Is there a winner I can put it on? Well, we'd have to set up the heart suit, and missing the queen jack makes it a little difficult only because of the number of entries we have over there. Yeah, plus, if there's a bad split at all, then we won't be able to do it. We just simply don't have enough hearts to set it up. But I have another plan. The first thing I'm do, going to do before anything else is I'm going to set up a club. Okay, I so right now I have two clubs in my hand and one club in the dummy. They lead a diamond. Now I'm very quickly just going to pull a couple trump. Saving one. Oof. And uh, fortunately, and then we and then what we're going to do is we're going to play clubs. Okay, so I pitched one. And now I can rough one. And this is getting rid of my one loser. They get the jack. And I get my eight of spades to make my tenth trick. So you see what we did there? Even though the hand started out when the hand started out, and it didn't look like it could rough, that we would have to play three rounds of diamonds to be able to rough. We actually got to rough on the third round of diamonds, which we needed to do. Okay, And we had to do it high because it was the third round of diamonds. So we roughed high with the queen. And, um, and we sh but we shortened the diamonds to make that possible. Right? We started off with, it looked like we had to rough the fourth round of diamonds, but by Playing the clubs first, we were able to pitch a diamond on a club from, and on a club winner in the hand, and then that meant after the ace and king of diamonds were gone, we could rough the next diamond, and we saved a trump for that. We roughed high so that West couldn't get in on the third round, which they would have done otherwise, and uh, we were able to get rid of. We had started with four losers, and uh, I mean started with four potential losers. And, uh, and and managed to work this down to just three. And notice if the spades had split evenly, we would have probably been even better. We had to give up spade trick. Right? Notice that hand's a little more complicated than the ones we've been talking about because we had to do some manipulation in the dummy first before we could rough a loser from our hand with a trump in the dummy. Right, but eventually we got back to that basic technique. Now the hands that I'm showing you, well, most of them, um, there's one or two I'm sure that I screwed up. But these basic techniques are hands that I did well on, right? And nothing special, nothing brilliant, but they came out of robot games where I scored, you know, 60, 67 or percent or higher, you know, on basic simple technique, nothing more, right? So and what I'm telling you over and over again is. Learn how to manipulate the cards this way, rough your losers, discard your losers, just those two techniques. And as you become more sophisticated in your card play, you'll be killing, right? You'll just be killing. All right, so um, I think I'm supposed to be in south on this one, so I'm going to jump over there. Let me see if I do this right here. Get out, then I put a dummy, put a robot in this hand. This is how you avoid the glitch that requires you to screw around with a bunch. All right, so south has opened one spade. And you can see how we can do that. Eight, nine, and five, 14 points with with six spades and four hearts. You know, and there's different, if I had a really good spade suit here, I'd just rebid the spades. But it's not really, you know, I, I'm missing a king, queen, 10 in the jack. There's a lot missing. So I think that in this hand, I want really want to show 10 cards all together, which I can do by bidding hearts here and then maybe bidding spades again if necessary. 
Um, so I'm going to bid the heart suit. I'm going to show him four, which apparently was the right idea. Partner goes to four hearts, and let's see what we have. All right, so we have probably no losers in hearts, I would say, since we have the ace, king, queen, jack, ten, missing the nine. We're gonna, we don't have any heart losers. We don't have a spade loser. Notice again that I'm looking at the long, the long trump hand is actually the dummy hand. Um, but um, so I'm going to mess up, and I'm probably going to call south the dummy from time to time. Remember that when I say dummy, I'm usually trying to say the short trump hand. Um, so we have a, we don't have any spade losers because the seven will go into the ace. We have three diamond losers, three of them. And then in the club suit, we have three club losers. So we have six losers, six losers in the minor suits. Now it's possible that a, that a club will grow up here because we have jack, queen, nine. Um, we might grow one of these up. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Now, we won't have grown it up, however, if West is out of clubs and East leads a club for a rough. Okay. Now, let's stop right here and, and, and look, at our, look what's going on. So, we started with three club losers and three diamond losers. And East is kind of forcing our plan here, right? We needed to get rid of them. First, um, they set up the Jack of Clubs. The Jack of Clubs is now a winner, assuming it doesn't get roughed. And, um, and they have basically forced us to rough diamonds in the shorthand. And the question is, should we rough them with, what, what trump should we rough them with? Okay. And our problem is this, that somewhere out there is the nine, nine of hearts. And if, they are, if West is now out of diamonds, or if West is out of diamonds when we try to rough them the second time, we are going to be so embarrassed that we let him take it with the nine of hearts. So here, this is a situation we must rough high. You may have been wrong, right? But does it really hurt you? Now you gotta get back over to your heart. You can use the little ones for that. I didn't really need to take that ace of spades there. That wasn't necessary, right? And now I go ahead and I rough the diamond and I rough high again. Okay, go back to the queen. And I hope the nine fell. Yes, it did. Good. I wasn't really watching. I was jabbering away. Okay. And now we have all the hearts, and they had already set up our jack of clubs. Okay. So we win. Good for us. So did you see what we did there? Um, we had six minor losers. They set up the jack of clubs for us. They promoted it. Right. So Those are our first couple weeks of class. They promoted the jack. And then um, they forced our hand. They forced us to rough diamonds by taking the king of diamonds off um, from me and then leading a diamond. And then the only thing I needed to decide to do, which was, you know, was there a chance a diamond could get roughed? Sure. So rough high, but also rough high because of entries, right? So if I rough high, then I can lead back the king, queen, ten. They're equals to the ace, jack. I don't need to play the ace and the jack to pull trump, I can just lead over to the king-queen, meaning I was free to rough with the ace and jack and actually had to rough with the ace and jack here to do this right. So that was another rough, rough, rough your losers with trump in the shorthand, in the dummy or the shorthand. Here I have five in the south where I'm supposed to be, five, six, twelve points. <laughs> Pretty yucky trump suit. Heart, two spades is called a Q bid. We use this bid as an invitational bid. It takes away the bid from east, but it also says, partner, I have your hearts, I have at least three of them, and I have invitational or better values. Right. So basically he's saying, go ahead, bid. If, if, even if you don't want to go to game, we're going to be safe at the three level. So it's a Q bid. You can use that in lots of situations. And that's what it almost generally always means, whether you're responding to your partner's overcall or whether you're responding to um, your partner's opening. All right, so do I want to go to game? 
Well, it's pretty iffy, and at match points, I don't know that I would. But I have this stiff, and I will tell you that if you play with me, you'll find that if I have a stiff, I am almost always going to game after an invitation. It's just, it's like one trick. It's kind of like, okay, you think we can make three, but you don't even know that I only have one diamond loser. So I'm going to go. And hope that he has some hard honors, which he does. All right, so we have king, queen, jack, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. A, lot, a big, long sequence of hearts. We will only lose one heart unless we let them rough. Right? We can only lose the ace of hearts. So one loser. And I'm counting losers in south hand because they have more trump than in north hand. In spades, I have the ace of spades as a winner, and then I have three spade losers. Always count those losers out. Don't make a plan in your head. Well, since I only have two spades and dummy, therefore I only have one loser. It may or may not be true. All right, That's the planning part. That comes next. That's not what's happening right now. Right now we're counting all the losers, and then we're going to make a plan. So I have three spade losers, one heart loser, three spade losers. We're up to four. I have a diamond loser. We're now at five. And then I have three clubs. I have, uh, sorry, I have, uh, I have three winners in clubs, right? Ace, king, queen. So I don't have any losers in clubs. So the question is, how do I get rid of these spades? Now, I could go ace of spades and then play a spade and then rough, but that's still one spade loser, one heart loser, and one diamond loser. So this might get me to 10 tricks. This might get me to 10 tricks. But if you think about the last hand we played, is there a way we can do better? And there is. What we're going to do again is we're going to shorten up. we got a short suit in spades in the dummy right now, right? We're going to shorten it up even more. And the third time through, we only had five of them. It's a really good chance we're going to be able to do that without getting roughed. And now, I can rough all these spades. I'm going to rough high again for the same reason as we did before, which was I need to get back to my hand. So I'm going to do this up here. And now I got rid of those spade losers. Fortunately, I think there's a really good chance here that uh, uh, a smart East will play a heart here. If they have one, yeah, they do. So now we have to just rough out the rest. And... Uh, is there one more heart left? No. Yeah, but it was a small one because he had to uh, be led. So we got our tenth, and then we, oh yeah, right. Sorry. He gets two spade, two heart tricks, and uh, we got ten. Uh, no, it wouldn't matter. If we'd let a spade, they would have won it in west and uh, east would duck. So we always get just ten, but you can see we took a sh that what we did was ensured our contract, made it real easy, as a matter of fact by roughing losers, rough spades, I roughing those losers in the dummy. I feel like I should have been able to rough one more. I shortened it up. I let a spade to the, oh, maybe I didn't uh, rough it high enough. Is that what happened? I don't know. I thought I could make five on this. So I'm just going to bid four hearts. Hopefully he won't go to six. But we get the club lead. Shorten up the spades. And play a spade. I guess I can only get back to my hand twice, even roughing high. Jack. Yeah. Okay, so I can only get that back there twice. Next hand. Another great hand. I'm supposed to be in Norse hand though, so um, move both, put a robot in the other hand, and sit in the hand I want to sit in. Avoiding the glitch. All right, so my partner opens spade. I have three, six, nine, four, thirteen, and I will make a game forcing two over one bid. 
I keep thinking that it'd be fun to teach some people 201. People make it harder than it seems. Um, two of hearts, and now he supports. So it was game forcing, so we're always going to get to four hearts. He's got a strong hand, though, is what he is saying. So I'm going to show him a control, four of clubs, the ace of clubs. He bids five of clubs, so he has a king, the king of clubs, or he may have a um, uh, void there. Let's see. But it's enough for me to bid slam in hearts, not spades. So we're missing the king of hearts. Looking at the losers in the long hand, which is my hand, we're missing the king of hearts. So one loser, no spade losers, two diamond losers. So I need to make I need to make a plan for those two losers. And then I have ace, king, queen of clubs. So that's pretty good. Ace, king, queen of clubs. But to be straight and honest with ourselves, we have a club loser. We'd like to see that work out in our favor, but right now we'll get three out of four tricks. So club loser and two diamond losers. We need to get rid of two losers. Now, the obvious thing we can do is rough. But there's another thing that we can do here. We can kind of combine two of our methods, right? We can play the ace over there and we can pitch a diamond, right? So now we're pitching a loser on a winner. Cross our fingers this, this works out. And play the five, and then rough a diamond. Now if we want to, we could even see if we could get the spades to go one more round, and they're going to. Now I can pitch a club. Now I have no club losers, right? That was that fourth club loser. Now all I have to do is lose the King of Hearts. I can arrange that. There, I lost it. And nine of Hearts. I think I saw the Eight of Hearts before. And uh, play it over the clubs. And a heart. So I ended up making 13 tricks. Now, it wasn't very complicated. What I did was I had two diamond losers in my hand and a club loser. And I found a way to get rid of all of them. Right? I pitched a diamond under the king of spades, and I pitched a club under the queen of spades. And I roughed a diamond because I was short in that suit in the dummy. So in this hand, I combined, combined our two basic techniques. I roughed losers from my hand with Trump in the, the dummy. And I... Um, and and I discarded a loser from my hand, a club, on a winner in the dummy. Right. So when you know, sometimes when people tell you if you got a long suit in the dummy or winners, lots of winners that are a sequence in the dummy, you should give yourself extra points. You know, if you're counting points, or it, it, like the way I suggest you do it is just learn to look for what is good in a hand. Right. Ace king queen in the dummy is good, and right? it's going to give you something to work with. And just think about how you play a hand, and you can see why having ace, king, queen was great here. All right. I'm supposed to be in the other hand. Okay, can't I get my eyes out of here? Put a robot in this one. All right, so on this one, North has again opened up a spade. And this time I have another game-forcing hand, a good hand, right? I have 17 points. 17 points. And if you're not, oh, this came up this morning. I should put a disclaimer on this one. If you haven't played the instant game this morning, uh, the, the weekly free instant game, uh, then I'm going to give some, you, you might want to just close your eyes for a while. Uh, skip on to the next hand, because this is from the one this morning. And I, I, that game is still around for the next couple of days. I did not get this right, at, and, I, and it was a bummer. Um, anyway, so two clubs. I, I, if you're not thinking, right, and I wonder if you can actually bid three clubs with another. No, three clubs is an invite. All right. Game forcing, two club bid. And now I have to decide where to go with this. Do I want to show the diamonds, or do I want to show the clubs? And I actually want to show the clubs. 
And but they're in this right now is is a danger, which is playing match points. Three no trump is a much better game to be in than five clubs, right? And the danger with me showing clubs it actually comes up here is that I think we probably have three no trump. I got the diamonds covered, and he has spades and hearts, right? And I got a running club suit, so I should have nine tricks. So when North bids five clubs, I really have no choice but to bid six clubs because making 420, I'm non vulnerable, a minor game is 400, making an extra trick brings it up to 420. But if three no trump is making 460 or 490, then there's just no way I can catch up to that unless I bid a slam. So I bid a slam. I did this part. This is what happened. Um, the play I screwed up. So when we look at our long hand, we have a heart loser, but we don't have a spade loser. And then we have three diamond losers. So we're going to somehow, we're going to have to, we can pitch one of them under the spade. If we can have a successful finesse, or if the king of heart east wins the king of hearts on, on the finesse, then maybe we can actually get a couple pitches there. And that's where my head was at when this hand started. I played the ace of spades to win. Oh, sorry, I didn't. Let me uh, take that back. Um, I made a much, a much better move, actually. Um, and and let's see, undo, undo, undo. Whenever I say undo, I always think fondue. Fondue, fondue. All right. Is that it? This is that I have the Ace King Ten in the dummy, and I if I can make the Ace King Ten into winners. Then I have all the pitches I'm going to need, right? I can pitch three diamonds on that. What I want is for West to be underleading the Queen of Spades. So I took a chance here and let it and let it ride. Lost to the Queen. Now it's a bummer, but I've still got the Ace King Ten now as winners, right? So I can pitch three diamonds underneath it, right? Or I can pitch a heart underneath it. But in any event, it's looking good. And then East plays the seven spades back, right? Which is, oh, I'm like, okay, I'll pitch one of them. And I just, I think I pitched a heart just like that, or I pitched a diamond, like a ASAP. Didn't really think out, why is he leading a spade? Now, they had seven spades, because we had six. And he leads a spade back into the ace-king ten. He's got to know that I'm pitching. This cannot be a good lead for him, right? Um, the obvious lead is not a heart either, because if his partner happens to have the king, he doesn't want to pick it off. So he could lead a club or he could lead a diamond. Those are the obvious ones. Why is he leading a spade? And the answer is obvious. Well, the spades are 6-1. He's, he's leading it for a rough. Right? I blew it. I didn't see that part. And, of course, I ended up going down badly. If you get the clue that if he's leading seven spades, it must be because he wants a rough, then you rough high. Right? you got king, queen, you know, you got all the top clubs, so this is not a big deal. Right? And throw the ace. So now you've preserved your three pitches on the ace king 10, right? And in the meantime, uh, you have prevented the rough. And now you got a count of the hand too, right? So there are four, six hearts, and he just pitched one. So that takes care of seven of them. But there are six more uh, in East West hand. Um, West only had one spade, and um, that gives East six. So we get a pretty good idea of what's going on in the hand. Now, what I want to do here is I want to find out more. And I'm certainly not going to risk a rough, right? Let's get rid of that possibility. There are five clubs out, and East showed out on the second time. So West had one spade and four clubs. I'm going to get rid of all of them. That's three, right? And four. Going to need picking away at what I know are losers in the other hand. Now in my head. When I went to replay this, I, I, when I realized it could make, and I just threw it back up after the thing, and I, when I did this, it's like, well, I thought, well, maybe it's a squeeze. Right? You know, so I started playing them all out and just made them pitch, and then I realized I don't really have a squeeze. That what I really, I don't want to lose to East having the King of Hearts and have him lead through the Diamonds and lose and lose to the King of Diamonds on the other side. What I really need the, is to just, I mean, I really have no choice is that both both red kings have to be in East hand. So I go up to that ace, right? and now I start playing spades. And we know that East had a bunch of them. So we make him get rid of them. 
and we get to this position. Okay? So if he has the king of hearts, he has to keep it. If he has the king of diamonds and small, he has to keep one of those. When I play the ten of spades, East has to decide what to do. And this is not an this is not a squeeze that makes automatically because West could have the king of hearts. Right? But when he throws the nine of diamonds, I can assume I can say to myself, okay, so if he has king, nine of diamonds, then he just he just unprotected the king. And he would only do he'd do that if he had the ace of hearts. Um, so I pitched the heart. And uh, and this would have all been brilliant had I done it the first time around. I didn't. In fact, I basically rushed on that on the second trick. I rushed and didn't think, well, why would he lead a spade? He was leading a spade because they were going to set the contract on the first two tricks. He was going for a rough. So, cool hand. All right, let's get back to one that's a little bit easier. I don't know. I threw that one in real fast this morning when it, when it came up because it was just a cool hand. Thought about making it the puzzle hand. And, uh, but, uh, anyways, 10, 14, 16 points. Huge hand. This is great. I almost want to double first. The other thing I want to do is just bid four spades. Um, not really preemptive. I can double and then go, well, I got 10, 16. I guess I'll double and then bid spades. Let's see what he does. He bids the hearts. Could one be four. Bid four spades. That's got to let him know I'm huge. If he wants to go further, he will. Okay. So, um, partner had seven points. So we have uh, 16 and seven. And it's 23 points. Pretty good. We we know that East has eight. All right. So that's about... And giving him eight because that's sort of a good middle ground for a weak hand. Um, so you know, it looks like the points are pretty evenly di divided. The missing points. Jack of diamonds is led. Puts the ace of diamonds in East's hand. Doesn't necessarily put the king of diamonds in East's hand. But it would be a weird line lead if the king of diamonds wasn't in East's hand. In fact, since East bid the preempted with the diamonds, I'm I'm going to just give him the ace king, and that's basically all his points. Um, what is this? What is the distribution of the diamond suits? Well, they got six, three, three, two. I'm uh, sorry, six, three, 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 one. So this is a stiff six, three, three, one. But uh, so so we're going to lose three diamonds. Um, it'll be we'll lose two diamonds and then we'll rough one. And there's not much we can do about that. So so that's three losers, and that leaves us with two heart losers to deal with. Anybody see? What we're going to do, right? Just think simple first before you get all complicated and get yourself deep in the weeds. Just keep it simple. Discard. Are we going to rough hearts? No, there's more hearts in the dummy than there are in my hand. So we're going to have to pitch them on winners in the dummy. Do you see winners? Sure, the ace and king of clubs, right? We're voiding clubs. So if we can get to Norse hand, we can play the ace and king of clubs, discard the hearts, and we won't care about the fact we lost three, two diamonds in a row. So we know what the plan is, and we're thinking, well, how are we going to get there? We watched them do what we knew they were going to do, because we knew we could count it as 6331. There's our winner. Oh, no. All right, so now all the suits are protected. He can't get back to East Hand for another rough. Our problem is we have to get rid of these two hearts underneath the Ace King of Clubs. This is where you have to watch those little spots. That nine of spades is the biggest card in the deck. Well, it's co-equal biggest card in the deck, right? It's just as good as the ace of spades. So I think what I'm going to do here is uh, take another spade. Oh, look at that. West only trump was that one. Um, I'll cross back over there with the nine, which is the highest one. Right? And now I'm going to hope that east, which did have long diamonds, uh, cannot rough in. And now we can just play outer spades. So the technique was simple, right? The technique was discard your losers from your hand on winners in the dummy. And the only puzzler about it was, well, how do we get over there? Right? And it was actually sort of simple. Your nine of spades is equal to your ace of spades. 
You can get over there just by leading them. We're never going to get through all these hands in class. In fact, I'm going to... I think I'll call it at that, and I can save these hands for next week, so I won't give them to you now. Um, I'm going to assume that we only went through that number of hands, because we'll talk slower. Um, and see you in a little bit. I'm recording this ahead of time, because after class, I'm uh, loading up and heading out on a tour, playing a couple gigs in Ohio, in Young's, Youngstown, at the West Bolarama or something, and then down in Eaton, Ohio, on Saturday night. So if you're, that's uh, Friday night and Saturday night, if you're in those towns or near those towns, look for Ed Dupas. Um, I'll be playing bass in his band. And uh, if you show up, say hello to me. I'd love to meet you. All right.